Welcome to ECE 376, lecture number four, binary inputs. Now the PIC processor has 33 I.O. pins. They're organized into five ports. There's port A, B, C, D, E. Those are split out on your breadboard as port A, B, C, and D. And it's kind of a sidelight. At this point, you should be soldering your circuit boards together. Next week will be the first assignment where we'll ask you to download your code on your PIC board. Again, it's a whole lot more fun seeing your program actually do something. So that's part of the reason we have your boards being built right now. Um, if you have problems with your board, let me know. I've got a couple spares I can swap with you. Um, if there's a soldering issue, I can usually fix it. Oftentimes, if there's an error, all that's wrong is the soldering on the back. It just needs to be touched up. But anyway, these are the five different ports for the I.O. pins, A, B, C, D. Uh, port E is just has three pins, and those are connected up here. Now, each of the ports can be either binary or analog, input or output. Uh, we're going to start out with everything binary. So, for binary inputs, 0 volts is logic 0, 5 volts is logic 1. There's a couple of types of inputs. One of them would be the push buttons. Again, for the, on the board, you've got these buttons right here tied to port B. Currently, port B is set to input. So when I hit the button operator 0, the light turns on. That means it's logic 1, and so on. Uh, these push buttons are connected to your PIC chip through these 1K resistors. We'll talk about that in just a sec. Plus, each input pin is connected to an LED through a 2.2K resistor. Now, there's a couple of different types of switches. There's single pole, double throw, or single pole, double pole, single throw, double throw. A single pole, single throw switch are like these push buttons. It's either open or closed. A single pole, double throw is, I want say, may have a motor go forward or reverse. I have two different directions for it to go. A double pole, single throw is if I actually have two switches tied together. Uh, sometimes you might want this. I want to have an LED turned on at 5 volts, plus I want to turn on motor at 40 volts when I close the switch. The more complicated one would be double pole, double throw. This is where I want to do something like have the motor go forward. Say this is your uh, plus 10 volts and ground. This would be the motor connected plus and minus. This is the motor connected minus plus. If I do that, I can have the motor go forward when it's connected high, or reverse, connected low. That's what double pull, double throw switches are for, having, a, having two options, forward and reverse. Again, the pick board that we're using has a single pull, single throw switch. The first problem is how do you convert the switch to a logic level? Again, on the pick board, it reads 5 volts is logic 1, and 0 volts is logic 0. So I need to uh, convert open and closed to 0 volts, 5 volts, and two ways to do that. One, I can use a pull-up resistor uh, tied to 5 volts. If the switch is open, the voltage is high. If the switch is closed, it's 0. So this is a case where 5 volts is open, 0 volts is closed. Anything I do in hardware, I can do in software. In hardware, I can switch that. Put the switch on the high side. Now when the switch is open, I'm ground. When the switch is closed, I'm 5 volts. The second case is what we actually have on your pick boards. Again, if you notice, when the switch is open, looking here on port B, switch is open, I get 0 volts. Switch is closed, the light turns on. That's 5 volts. So our pick boards have the second configuration. A couple options. There's a capacitor for debouncing and that resistor. This is actually a 1K resistor on your boards. That's these guys over here. What that does is suppose the PIC processor makes port B output, then the PIC is driving these pins at 0 volts, 5 volts. If I play with these buttons while the processor is running, I have a fight. The hardware says 5 volts. The PIC says 0 volts. This 1K resistor is your dummy protection. If you ever have port B as output at the same time I'm playing with the buttons, this limits the current to 5 milliamps. You have 5 volts across 1K. And the PIC can do 5 milliamps. Um, that's really the only point behind those 1K resistors. 
In addition, there's the capacitor. If you notice, this is a program we're going to talk about a little bit. I'm counting on port C. Every time I hit the button, I count. Occasionally, I get a double count. What's happening is the push button is a mechanical switch. Sometimes when I close the button, it bounces a couple times. The pick is actually very, very fast. It can see that bouncing. And it'll interpret it as I push the buttons three times in one millisecond. The capacitor gets rid of bouncing. It takes time to charge and discharge. So if I see a bump, bump, bump on the switch, it won't charge and discharge that fast. I'll only get a single response. That's a hardware solution to get rid of bouncing. Uh, your pickboard actually doesn't have that. I can also do that in software. And anything I do in software I can do in hardware. In software, what I would do is if I see an edge, I ignore all subsequent edges for, say, 50 milliseconds. Um, either way works. Uh, so that's converting a switch to a binary input. Um, and actually, again, a program we'll talk about a little bit. Right now, this is a program counting the edges on port B. When I hit the push button, I'm getting one zero. That's from the button. And port C is my counter, count, counting how many times I've hit the button. So that's the push button. Uh, second problem I run into looks at voltages. Like suppose I want to have a binary output, 5 volts when a voltage is more than 2.3, 0 volts when it's less than 2.3. Again, I want to TTL levels, 0 volts, 5 volts, because that's logic 1, logic 0. One way to do that is use an op amp. The, use something like an MCP602 or an LM833 op amp, something that works between 0 volts and 5 volts. The way an op amp works, if V plus is more than V minus, it slams high, which is 5 volts. If V plus is less than V minus, it slams low, which is 0 volts. And I want these voltage levels to be 0 and 5, because guaranteed the output can't be more than 5, can't be less than 0, if that's my power supply. If you use a 741 op amp, those are plus minus 12 uh, volt power supplies. Plus 12 volts will kill the pick, minus 12 volts will kill the pick. So you don't want to use this LM741. You want an op amp that will operate between 0 and 5 volts. That's like a 602 or an 833. Uh, if I can do a voltage, I can also do a temperature. If I want to come up with a switch, I'll count how many times the temperature goes above 20 degrees Celsius, what it would do is something like this. I'll convert temperature to resistance using a thermistor. Uh, this thermistor is 1250 ohms at 20C. And the resistance drops as temperature goes up. It's typical of thermistors. I'll then convert resistance to voltage. Use the voltage divider. At 1250 ohms, this is 2.74 volts. Then it's the previous solution. Compare this voltage to 2.74. And if it's really, really hot, meaning this voltage is low, the output goes high. If it's really, really cold, the R is high, voltage is high, this goes zero. So this is a binary switch that switches at 20 Celsius. In terms of VI characteristics, this is what it looks like. When the voltage is low, meaning it's actually very, very hot, the output voltage is high, I switch at 20 Celsius, or 2.74 volts. When it's cold, or high voltage, the output is zero. The op amp only cares about voltage, doesn't care about temperature. So I usually like drawing this in terms of voltage, not temperature. Again, for low voltage is high, for high voltage is low. That inverse relationship is why I connect to the minus input. As an example, this is the circuit that I have. This is the same one we had, but I've got a light sensor rather than a temperature sensor. Again, this is the 5 volts from your pick board. This is ground from your pick board. Drives an op amp. On V plus, V minus, I have a potentiometer that lets me vary the voltage right here, and then a light sensor and a voltage divider. If I cover up the light sensor, I'm going again, had it just potentiometer. Um, and when I cover up the light sensor, the resistance goes up and the light goes off. That'd be like when it's really, really cold. As it heats up or goes down, the light turns on and it's a little binary signal. 
if I take that output, take the output of the op amp and connect it to port B pin 0, again the pick is dumb. It doesn't know where the 5 volts comes from. Did it come from a push button or a light sensor? Here it came from a light sensor. As I add a shadow and goes away, notice on port C I count. That's some code we're going to be looking at in just a sec. Every shadow counts 1. Uh, there I just got a double count. So there's one. There I got a uh, double count again, a couple counts. Bunch of counts. So with something like this, what I can do is stick that in my refrigerator and count how many times the door's opened. Make that a temperature sensor, and I can count how many times temperature goes below zero degrees Celsius. Make that a magnetic field sensor, and I can tell you how many times somebody ran a printer, because the motors generate magnetic fields, and things like that. That's a counter and a comparator. The problem with the comparator is if there's a little bit of noise on the input, if I'm right here, I'm going to be getting multiple counts. To avoid that, there's a thing called a Schmidt trigger. That adds hysteresis. What a Schmidt trigger does is instead of switching at the same point, I change the two. I'm going to set at, say, one temperature, 20 Celsius, all clear at a different temperature or different voltage. So that way, if there's a little bit of noise on the input, the output stays low. As soon as it gets above, or in this case, below 2.74 volts, the output jumps high. If there's still noise, if it's high, it stays high. It's not going to go low again until I get above 2.99 volts. Then it falls low. That dead zone avoids chatter. It'll avoid multiple counts, like we had here. The way you add hysteresis is a Schmidt trigger. This is one of the few times you'll ever see positive feedback. Positive feedback is unstable. What that does is if the output is high, the positive feedback keeps it high. If it's low, it'll keep it low. Really what positive feedback says, if I'm going too fast, go faster. If it's too hot, make it hotter. If I have too much voltage, add more. Positive feedback makes you go unstable. And this actually, I want that to be the case. This line right here is unstable. If I have a voltage that's slightly higher than it, it's going to jump high to plus 5. If it's slightly below, it jumps low to 0. And I want that because 0 volts, 5 volts are logic levels. I don't really know what 2 volts means. So if this voltage is slightly too high, the positive feedback makes it go even higher, and it rails to 5 volts. If it's too low, the positive feedback makes it go even lower, rails at minus or 0 volts. The way you design a Schmidt trigger comes back to this figure. It's do the same thing we did before. Take your thermistor in this case, find the resistance at your two points. In this case, it's 20 Celsius and 25 Celsius. Yep, 15 Celsius and 20 Celsius. Find those voltages. Um, and this case turns out to be 2.99, 2.74. Determine whether this is Z going left or Z going right. In this case, as the voltage goes high, that means it's getting really cold. The up it goes low. So I connect to the minus input right here. The plus input is when the output is zero. Where do you switch? I turn on at 2.74 volts. So that's this guy right here. The offset is 2.74. And the ratio is the gain. The gain is output over input. The output changes by 5 volts. As the input changes by 0.24 volts, that ratio is the gain. That ratio is 20.5, so make this 20.5 to 1. And I made this large relative to that resistance. This is about a 1K. These are actually in parallel to R, which is going to change the resistance, going to change the voltage. If this is large, say 200 times bigger, it does change the voltage slightly, but not a whole lot. Put those three together. I've got the voltage divider going to the minus input. Here's my offset. There's my gain. That's the Schmidt trigger. And what that'll do is, same thing we had before, as light goes up and down, gets brighter and dimmer, I'll count. But I won't get those multiple counts anymore. The neat thing about um, sensors is just change that resistor. Change this guy right here. And instead of switching on temperature, I can switch on light, like I did in the demo. Or I can switch on magnetic fields or other things. Here, for example, I just went to DigiKey and searched for sensors. 
and Digikey sells, it looks like over 10,000 different sensors, probably more than that. Uh, replace that resistor with an amplifier, uh, color sensor, encoder, float, gas, humidity, magnetic field, optical, light, shock, proximity, strain, temperature, touch, range. Almost all the sensors are resistive in nature. The circuit doesn't know, it doesn't care what kind of resistor that is. Change that resistor to one of these, and I can now count how many times the um, magnetic field went above a certain point. Or for gas sensors, how many times somebody walked in the room after having a three martini lunch. I can measure that. That's really the power of these embedded systems. Change the sensor, and I can measure just about anything I want. Uh, one kind of sidelight. If you would like to play with a different sensor, just let us know. We can usually get them for you. Uh, some of them we have in stock, like alcohol sensors, if you're over 21. If you want a cyanide gas sensor, the answer is no. We're not going to get you one. Uh, you might want to test it. But other ones, uh, magnetic field sensors, we have those. Strain sensors, we have those. Uh, have you ever seen the smart gloves as you bend your hand? I can have the processor respond to it. That's just a flex sensor. You put it in your, in your finger, your glove, as you bend your finger, the resistance changes, and I can have it turn on and off at a certain point. We have those. Once you get a binary output, you might want to do something with it. That's where this class comes into play with embedded systems. I, for example, might want to just count. For example, suppose let's play the game Hungry Hungry Hippo. That's uh, everyone's favorite game when they were a kid. You start a timer and you hit your button as fast as you can, and your hippo tries to eat all the marbles. Let's build an electronic version of Hungry Hungry Hippo with your circuit board. The input will be the push, two push buttons, RB0 and RB7. The output will be port C and port D. And I'm going to start at zero. And then for the duration of the game, both people thrash their button as fast as you can, and we count. How many times did I hit RB0? How many times to hit RB7? A way to detect a rising edge is if I look at the button push, this is what it looks like in terms of voltage when I push the button. I want to find the rising edge, which means it's currently RB0 is a 1, and the previous reading was a 0. That 0 1 transition is what indicates a rising edge. And software can do that as follows I'm going to record the current value and old value, and then check. Is the current value a 1 and the old value a 0? If so, increment it. That's on port B pin 0. Likewise on port B7. If the current value is a 1 and the old value is a 0, increment port C. If you'd like to try that out, just take the Hungry Hungry Hippo code, copy it, take the code that we had last time, Replace it, compile, and this goes into 1234.hex, same as before. I'll now go into Nate Zimmerman's bootloader program. Resend 1234.hex, again, this has to be lowercase hex. This is downloaded, I've got my program on there. And what this program does is every time I hit RB0, and the reason it wasn't working before is I still had my sensor connected to port B pin 0, and there was a fight. Hardware was controlling port B pin 0, the button's controlling port B pin 0. Hardware won because that 1K resistor isolated the push button. So taking out the hardware. I now have port B pin 0 counting on port D. As I thrash my button, I count how many marbles I eat with my Hungry Hippo. My opponent can play hit RB7. On every 0 to 1 transition, it counts. So 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0, and a whole bunch of times. So you can have two people playing for so many seconds, count how many times you hit your button, and the winner is whoever has the biggest number. In this case, it's Port C, player two. That's the Hungry Hungry Hippo game in Assembler.